Amen. About to start. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his whole Lee name and I will bless, bless the Lord oh my, my soul, soul and all that Y'all came to have some church on today. He has done. He has done great things. He has done. He has done great things. Bless his holy name. Come on, bless the Lord. 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 Bless. I love the Lord. Yes, God. I love the Lord. Come on, does anybody love him? I love the Lord. I love him. Come on and worship him. Come on and worship him. Come on, church, let's worship him. Come on, church, let's worship him. Come on, let's worship him. Come on, out of the fruit of your lips. Come on, worship him. Tell him how good he's been. Come on and worship him. Oh, we love you, Lord. Yes, 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 Lord. And we praise you and we give you we give you glory. Welcome. Yes, you may have your seats to Emmanuel to our deacon ordination service where we are honoring great men who have been called in to service. We're going to start first by prayer. I'm going to come by Elder Victor McCoy. Then we will have scripture by Elder Carlton Campbell. Please come in that order. Let us stand for prayer. Yes. Our Father and our God, we thank you again today. We bless your name because you're worthy to receive all glory. You're worthy to receive all honor. All glory belongs to you. And so we worship you. We magnify you. We praise you today. We have come to celebrate these men who have been elevated to another level of service. And so we praise you. We magnify you. We bless your name because they have answered the call of, yes, another level of ministry. 
And so we ask that you would anoint us, that you would bless us together as we celebrate them, that you would anoint them and give them presence of mind of what they are embarking on. And Father, we just magnify you. We bless your name. We thank you for these men of God. We thank you for these deacons who have come to stand in the gap, Lord, for yes. those who have come to be men of God, to be men of character, to be yes. men of righteousness, Lord. Yes. And so we bless you, we praise you, we magnify you. We thank you that your presence is always with us, Lord. Now bless us now as we praise you, as we worship you together. Bless the wives of these men in the name of Jesus. And we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. may be seated. Reading from Acts chapter 6, verses 2 through 6. Acts chapter 6, verses 2 through 6. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenius, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. While we're still standing, we want to have the entrance of our deacons. Come on, let's put our hands together. Deacon Brian Butler. Deacon candidate Kenneth Ferguson. Come on, let's praise God for them. Oh, you can do much better than that. Come on, let's celebrate these men. going to move forward with our service by way of praise and worship with a couple of songs. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, God. Song says, woke up this morning with my mind. Hey. Stayed on Jesus. Oh, I woke up this morning with my mind yeah, on Jesus. Here we go. Woke up this morning with my mind yes, yeah, on Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, one more time, oh, say, woke up this morning with my mind, oh, say, on Jesus, oh, I woke up this morning with my mind, I say, on Jesus, oh, I woke up this morning with my mind, say, oh, on Jesus. Jesus, say hallelujah, hallelujah, yeah, hallelujah. One more time, say I woke up this morning with my mind, yeah. Hey. Say on oh, Jesus, I woke up this morning with my mind, 
Second song says, praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Said he's my rock. seats. We're certainly blessed to be here in this momentous occasion. And we at Emmanuel Church of God in Christ just want to, we want to welcome all of our visitors. Those of you who come to visit, come on, come on Emmanuel. Let's praise God for our visitors. Let's let them feel welcome. Come on, y'all can do much better than that. Come on, y'all. Y'all just had some food. Y'all got to have more energy than that. 
And so we praise God. We praise God. Certainly we come here this evening to ordain two of God's choice men, Brother Kenneth Ferguson to the office of deacon and to formally affirm the ordination and to appoint deacon Brian Butler to the office of deacon here at Emmanuel. Come on, let's pray God for these men. And let's praise God for their families who are here. Come on, let's praise God for their families. Y'all, y'all weak, y'all weak this afternoon. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Praise God, praise God. For these wonderful women who stand by these great men's side. Beside every woman, not behind every woman, or behind every man. Beside every man is, is an awesome and anointed woman of God. And we praise God for these wonderful women who stand by these men. Acts chapter 6, verse 1. We've heard some of that on earlier in our scripture reading. It talks about the establishment of the deacons. Uh, and it talks about that during the time in which the church was expanding, that they had the need to feel so that some of the women who were neglected, the widows, others of the church who were not being properly ministered to, they had to appoint some men to serve them. Not just any kind of man. They had to appoint some spirit-filled men to be able to serve into, into that office. And so we've read from Acts chapter 2 or Acts chapter 6 verses one through six, give the whole establishment of that. The word deacon is transliterated to mean deaconos, which is which means one who waits or serves. Acts chapter six, we find this was the infancy of the church, and as the church was growing, there was the need that was there. One problem that emerged in the early church was that the Greek speaking Jewish widows were being neglected. When the when the apostles received news of this problem, they knew they had to do something. They knew that allowing this problem to continue would cause division in the church. And while they realized the gravity of the situation before them, they also realized that they got distracted by serving tables, and so it would divert them from their primary call of the ministry. So the apostles didn't think that it would be beneath them to serve widows, but they wanted to remain faithful to the calling and the gifting by which they were called by God. So for them to leave the preaching of the word of God and serve tables would have been a mistake so they proposed a better solution. The apostles decided to choose seven men to be appointed to the task of overseeing the daily distribution of food and serving the people of God. Yet they realized that they could not simply choose any type of man, but they had to choose select men who had good reputation and were spirit-filled. Let me say that again. They had to have good reputation and be spirit-filled. So by appointing these men to help with the daily distribution of food, the apostles took this need seriously, but did not want to get distracted by their call. And with the seven appointed to take care of the problem, the apostles were able to devote themselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Now, these seven men were not called deacons, but because the word serve used in Acts 6 and 2 is the Greek infinitive deacono which is believed that the seven men appointed by the apostles in Acts chapter 7 were actually deacons. So that's where we get that. We get it from the extrapolation of the text. So the office of deacon affords an excellent opportunity for service in the church of Jesus Christ. And one attitude towards a position is of importance, as no one should be selected to serve in this office that is not willing to render humble service. In fact, the qualifications of a deacon are among those of an elder. And while deacons are not required to be apt to teach, two of the deacons, Stephen and Philip, were preachers of the gospel. Therefore, deacons should be men who are knowledgeable in the word of God. If you was here this morning, you know we need the word. Because deacons are prospective elders. I was a deacon. Before I became an elder, I was a deacon for many years, and I learned service. First lady was a deaconess. We learned service before God elevated us to leadership. And so it's important to be have a servant's heart before you can lead. You can't lead if you've never followed. And so 
this position of and this office of deacon is very near and dear even to the pastor's heart because deacons are called to be men that help to uplift the arm of the pastor. And so deacons should be men of constant study of God's word, and they should also be men of prayer. So what are the qualifications of a deacon? Well, 1 Timothy 3, 3, 8 through 13 explains deacons must be dignified, not double-tongued, not addicted to much wine. They shouldn't be addicted to no wine. (laughs) Not greedy for dishonest gain. But they must hold the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. Let them be tested first. And that's the reason why they go through an examination period so they can be observed, to observe their faithfulness. And then let them serve as deacons if they prove themselves blameless. Their wives, likewise, must be dignified. Not slanders, but sober-minded, faithful in all things. Let deacons each be the husbands of one wife. <laughs> Let me say that. Each be the husband of one wife, managing their children and their own households well. For those who serve well as deacons gain a good standing for themselves and also great confidence in the faith that is in Jesus Christ. There was a special anointing that comes with the office of service of deacon. It's something that oftentimes people overlook. Deacons are not just the men who count the money, but they are men who are astute in service of the Lord's church. A few highlights, and we will get to the consecration, but a few highlights of this, of these uh, qualifications, because they're important. Number one, said they must be dignified. And the requirement lists deacons that they must be dignified. The term uh, refers to someone who is honorable, respectable, esteemed, and worthy of respect. Deacons and their wives must be people who are honored and respected by those who know them. Not double-tongued. But a deacon must also not be double-tongued. The the Greek word um, delogos literally means something said twice. People who are double-tongued say one thing to certain people, but they say something else to someone other. They say one thing, but they mean something else. They're two-faced and insecure. We we can't have deacons like that. Their words cannot be trusted And thus they lack credibility. So deacons must be people who are careful with their tongue, not saying what they should not, being faithful to the truth in their speech. They must be they must speak truth in love and cannot be slippery with their words, seeking to manipulate situations for their own personal good. Sober minded deacon must be sober minded. Sober minded is often used in connection with sobriety from alcohol. However, it's best understood as referring to mental sobriety. That is a mind that can think clearly and spiritually about important matters. Something happens, something breaks out in the church. Deacons need to be sober-minded to know how to act to a situation. It's the ability to be self-controlled, having balanced judgment, and being able to rationally make cool-headed decisions that's marked by the life of a deacon. To that end, a man is disqualified from the office if he's a drunkard, if he's addicted to wine or other strong drink. Since such person lacks self-control and is undisciplined, alcohol addiction is a problem in most cultures and often results in ruined lives, marriages, and ministries. But the real issue is the abuse of any substance that would bring shame on a person and reproach on the church. Deacons must be men who are sober-minded, not greedy, The love of money was a serious problem in Paul's day and is still in our day. Given that deacons are entrusted to manage the resources and offerings of the church, it's important that a deacon handles financial affairs with complete transparency and integrity. But last, sound in the faith. Paul indicates that a deacon must hold the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. The reference to the mystery of the faith is another way of Paul speaking of the gospel. Thus, this statement refers to the doctrinal beliefs of a deacon. Deacons must hold firm to the true gospel of Jesus Christ without wavering. 
Yet this qualification does not merely involve one's belief, for he also must hold these beliefs with a clear conscience. That is, the behavior of a deacon must be consistent with his beliefs. Let me say that again. The behavior of a deacon must be consistent with his beliefs. And when I was a deacon, I was taught that you was a deacon 24-7, seven days a week. But wasn't just a deacon on Sunday. Wasn't just a deacon for a couple of hours. You were a deacon seven days a week for 24 hours. Because you never know who you run into. I ran into people on the street, ran into people at the grocery store. Hey, ain't you one of the... Ain't you one of the deacons? Or even now, aren't you elder such and such? And now, if I'm acting a fool, then that would be damaging to my witness. But you have to understand that you represent Emmanuel wherever you go. Wherever you go. And so you always have to have that clear conscience of walking in the true faith where your conduct matches your faith. Therefore, this requirement speaks not only to the doctrine of a deacon, but it speaks to his behavior. It's not enough to have the grasp on the theological profession of the church, but that message must, knowledge must also be accompanied by the appropriate behavior. And that's why we test the men to making sure to ensure that they are men of integrity, that they're men that are blameless. The word blameless in general, it refers to the overall character of a person's life. Not to say that people are perfect, but it means that if you make a mistake, you're transparent. You are a person of integrity. And so we believe that this is a vital and important uh, characteristic of our deacons. And so as deacons, it's a vital part. This office is a vital part of the ministry in supporting to fulfill the vision of the pastor. As a deacon, you must be saved. You must be Holy Spirit filled. You must be a tither. For those deacons who serve well earn for themselves honor and reward, a good reputation and high esteem above others. And so those are the qualifications of a deacon. But I, for, few, for a few minutes, few minutes, I also want to say that it's not just the deacons who walk in the office, but there's also qualifications for the wife. Y'all got real quiet. Please understand that a deacon does not serve by himself, but a deacon also serves with his wife. Therefore, the wives of a deacon are called to live a saved and sanctified life as her life is a reflection of his life. And so what are those qualifications? Well, 1 Timothy 8 and, and, and 11 tells us that she must be dignified or well-respected, not a slander or a gossip. She must be sober-minded and faithful in all things. The wife of a deacon must be trustworthy because oftentimes she may hear things from her husband that's going on in the church and the last thing you need her doing is spreading around church business throughout the church. So she needs to be a woman of trustworthy, a woman of integrity, a woman that is committed self-control and faithful to her husband because if she wearing him out at home, he ain't going to be in the right headspace when he come to church. <laughs> Y'all got real quiet on me here. This is practical <laughs> wisdom in that it is important that the women hold true and support the husbands and the deacons because oftentimes they may be called to service. And so you must be understanding of the call and the appointment that they have on their lives. It's not the pastor who's the only one who's called to serve. The deacons are also called to serve. And so if he's called to serve, but you got your lips poked out, you miss the call. So you have to understand that he may be called at any time to render faithful service. But in all things, the deacon's wife is called to be a blessing to his life, to help to enrich him and to help to encourage him. Amen. Amen. Now we want to, you know, the qualifications of a deacon, deacon's wife. Now we want to give the deacon charge. It's time for our deacon candidate, uh, Deacon Kenneth Ferguson, and our deacon appointee, Deacon Brian Butler, to stand now and recite the deacon charge. These men have served faithfully under my observation and training for nearly two years, and my personal recommendation, I present these men for ordination to the office 
of Deacon. Come on, put our hands together for these men. <laughs> Gentlemen, I want to charge you before God and these witnesses for you to serve faithfully in this office, to commit yourselves to Christ, to regular study of God's word, and to prayer. As a deacon, your job is not just to count the money, but is to serve, to attend to the needs of the congregants that require your care. We do hope in prayer that you as deacons at a man church of God in Christ will live a saved and a holy life, proving yourself to be men of faith and good reputation before all people. You're not, I said before, you're not just a deacon on Sunday, but you're a deacon 24 hours, seven days a week. And to be ordained to this office gives you both the obligation and the privilege to so serve those who are in need and to uphold the arms of your pastor. Therefore, I charge you, do you believe in your heart that you have been called by God to serve in this office as deacon? And you shall answer, I do believe. Do you believe the Bible to be the only inspired, infallible word of God to lead all to eternal life by salvation and the only rule book for our faith and practice, and you shall answer, I do believe. Will you endeavor to live soberly, righteously, and godly as a deacon in this church so that you may be an example to others in Christian living? And you shall answer, I will, so help me God. Will you serve this office faithfully and perform with honest and integrity all duties assigned to you as deacons according to the order and direction of the senior pastor? And you shall answer, I will, so help me God. Will you serve in true humility and deal justly, kindly, and patiently with all who have been called to serve? You shall answer, I will, so help me God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the power of uh, of authority invested in me as senior pastor, I do hereby ordain Kenneth Ferguson as a deacon of Emmanuel Church of God in Christ, and I appoint, formally appoint, Deacon Brian Butler to serve the same. Come on, let us praise God for these men. Oh, come on, y'all can do much better than that. Now, we normally ask the men to kneel beside your seats, so you get the option of kneeling beside your seat or just standing where you are. I'm going to come down and pray the consecration prayer over you, and I want the wives to stand behind your husbands. Father God, as we anoint these men to service, pray, Father God, that you will give strength. Pray, Father God, that you will give spiritual revelation and knowledge and discernment to serve and walk according to the call in which you have called. You are a good God. You are a faithful God. You've already shown yourself to Deacon Butler, you've shown the type of God who you are. And so now, God, that you have done something special for him. He has committed himself to do something special for you. And so we pray, Father God, for an overflow and anointing on his life. Even now, give him strength. Give him vitality. Give him the ability to walk according to the call in which you've called for him. He's overcome the odds because there's still work for him to do. And so we thank you and we praise you that even now, Father God, that your spirit will flow. Anoint him afresh and anew. Do only what you can do 
And we anoint him for your service right now. In your name we pray, amen Amen. and amen. Father God, we come before you now praying for Brother Ken. God, you, you know his heart. He has a servant's heart. And I pray, Father God, that you will just extend to him favor and blessing. Everything that he endeavors to do, we pray that you will anoint it. We pray, Father God, that you will make it well. We pray, God, that you would just continue to strengthen him, alleviate any pain, frustration, depression that he may have faced. But this is a new walk. This is a new time. This is a new day. You're anointing him to walk in boldness. You're anointing him, Father God, to walk in service. He's a humble man. But we pray, Father God, that you will give him spiritual boldness to step out, to walk on faith, and to do everything that you have called for him to do. God, you have great things in store for him. God, you have great things that you have called for him to do. And so we thank you now as he opens up his heart and his mind to be attentive to your will and your way. And we thank you for this. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, let's put our hands together. Gentlemen may come to their seats, their stand. <clears throat> so their certificates read, having been chosen as a person of good report, full of the spirit and of wisdom, capable of serving well, as set apart publicly to the office and work of deacon by the Emmanuel Church of God in Christ on this 14th day of April in the year of our Lord, 2024. Signed, Bishop Ulysses C. Henderson, pastor. And so with this, I want to present our ordination certificates to our deacons. Come on, let's put our hands together. So first we have Deacon Brian Butler. Come on, let's praise God for him. Next, we want to present our certificate to Deacon Kenneth Ferguson. Come on, let's praise God for these men. Amen. Now we present to you, even before we present, I want to I wanna first just say a word about these two men. You may have your seats real quickly. I'm not going to be before you long. Deacon Butler has been a good friend of our family for some years. Uh, I served with him when I served on the Eagles. See a few Eagles in the house from West Angeles. And he's always been um, a man of integrity, um, a man that I could always look up to. And one of the things that I would say is that um, the best training that I had, and I'll say this publicly, at West Angeles is serving with the Deacon Corps. 
these were awesome men who were men of integrity. They were men of service. You knew that their only motivation was to serve. And some people think that ministry is a form to catapult and do a bunch of things. No. When in the deacons meeting, we had monthly meetings. We had a word. A deacon was assigned to give a word. So we got a word. We, got, we had a lesson about our qualifications and what was required. It was true training. And the other thing about being a deacon at West Day is you get the best seats in the house. <laughs> All you had needed that, that deacon badge, boy. If, if it was a full house, the deacon's going to have a seat. And we'd have a good seat. So we never had to worry about that. But the other thing is, in spending time with Bishop Blake, he revered his deacons because in the early stages of the church and in the growing of West Angeles, the deacons had to do double time. They were there with him. They even went with him when he had to preach um, at different churches, and, and they were there. They were his armor bearers before they were even armor bearers. And so the high regard that he had for deacons, they were his right-hand men um, because they served him faithfully and loved him faithfully, and that's where I learned um, the critical importance of deacons. And here, even at Emmanuel, our deacons, I can call them, and they're on point. And so we are thankful for these great men of service, and these two men have already been serving. And so um, we're just excited to have Deacon Butler with us as part of our family. And he wanted to eagerly get in and get involved and to serve. Uh, Deacon Ferguson has just been a man of, I've come to know and learn. And one of the first things, <laughs> well, I don't know if I should say that. Um, Okay, how he first got my attention was when I first became pastor, he was holding his tithes. And when I became pastor, he released all of, the, all of his tithes under my watch. And he said, I was holding them until we received a pastor. And so he was faithful in terms of that, and he felt enough and trusted within me to say, this is where I'm going to be. And I'm not going to tell you the amount, but I'm going to tell you, it was a nice little chunk of change you know, had stored up. And so that, that, that kind of helped me. It gave me a good little bump in my first couple months. I was feeling real good because Deacon Ferguson had set them aside. And the one thing about Deacon Ferguson is whenever I see him and we talk, he says, Pastor, do you need anything? That's the first thing he says. Pastor, do you need anything? Not, not what can you do for me, but his first response is, what can I do for you? How can I serve? Do you need, do you need me to do anything? You need me to stay? You need me? I'm like, no. He's like, are you sure, pastor? And I'm like, yeah. That, that is that just a reflection of his heart, the type of man that he is, and I believe that God is going to continue to bless him for his humility and for his love for the church, his love uh, for First Lady and myself and, and just his humble spirit and his humble heart. And I just want you to know I appreciate you. Amen. I appreciate every time you say, hey, hey, Pastor, do you need me to do anything? Even if I don't need it, I appreciate the fact that you always have a willing heart to do it. And I know with talking with uh, Deacon Ford and Deacon Franklin that they always say, hey, we know if we need something, Brother Ken is there. He's there to do it. He's there to help and to assist. And so I'm, I'm just proud of the men that we have serving here at Emmanuel. Um, I would not trade these men. I would not trade them for anybody else. And I'm not just saying it because I'm here and I got the mic. I, t I would not do it. These are awesome men who are dedicated uh, and I know that they love me, and I know they love First Lady, and I know that they love this church. And so if I, if I give them something to do, I never have to worry about whether it's going to be done. I know that it's already going to be done. 
And I know that as we continue to grow and we have other deacons, that they will serve as good examples to teaching other men how to be and how to serve. And so we thank God for them. I just wanted to give this time to let these men know how much they're loved and how much they're appreciated. We don't take it for granted, but we appreciate you being here. You could be anywhere else, but you've decided to be here and to help your pastor and first lady as we're trying to move in the direction that God would have us to be. And I want to thank our Emmanuel family who stayed to support these men. Come on. Let's praise God for yourself for doing that. And so with that, we're not going to be before you even much longer. We want our deacons to stand, and I want to present these awesome men. I want to present to you Deacon Kenneth Ferguson and Deacon Brian Butler. Come on, turn to the people. Turn to the people. I'm going to come down and take a photo with these brothers. Amen, amen, amen. Now, now don't, now don't y'all make me not do this again. But I just want to give the brothers an opportunity. If they wanted to say something, I want to give them just a few minutes uh, to just have some words of expression um, just for you to be able to hear them before we have the benediction. Amen. to God, and I give him all the glory, and I just thank God for being here at Emmanuel, and I am thank God that I'm a deacon, and I'm here to serve. Amen. 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 Oh, boy. First, I want to say thank you, God. For, for you that know me, he's brought me a mighty long way. And I must say to my Emmanuel family that you guys took me in with all your heart. And I want to say thank you. If I haven't said thank you to, to you personally, I'm saying it to you now. Thank you. Thank you, Emmanuel. And Bishop, I want to say thank you for your words every week. They are sunken deep into my heart. And I want to say thank you. God bless you. I'm going to ask uh, our deacons to come and just to come and just to greet our new deacons and with the right hand of fellowship. God, we praise God, we praise God. We're standing. 
Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. So let the church say amen. Come on, one more time. Let the church, let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. So let the church say amen. Father God, we thank you and we praise you on today. We thank you for this time of consecration. We thank you for this time of celebration. But we pray, Father God, that you will anoint these men and that you will walk with them wherever they go. We pray, Father God, that this will be the start of a new life of service and a new just uh, burst of invigoration to do what you have called for them to do. And so we pray for every witness that has come here to witness this awesome time of consecration. And so we pray that as we leave this place, but not your presence, that your angels will be camped round about us. Protect us from danger seen and unseen until we meet again. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken, so let the church say amen. God bless you. Go in peace.